Welcome to the Metropolitan Futures Initiative quarterly report on detecting job density over time. The MFI is a research unit at the University of California Irvine School of Social Ecology. We focus on interdisciplinary research, big data, and spatial analysis techniques to improve the understanding of urban growth patterns and community development, with an emphasis on Southern California. I'm Kevin Kane, a geographer and a postdoctoral research fellow with the MFI, and I'll be presenting this video, which is based on the first installment of our new quarterly report series. Contributing to this project are John Hip and Jae Hong Kim, both professors in the School of Social Ecology, and Young An Kim. Cities were once thought to be what we call monocentric, meaning that the highest density of jobs was typically in a single center, usually a downtown. In contrast, the Los Angeles region has multiple centers of concentrated employment. It's heavily studied for what we call polycentricity, which can be seen in this 3D map of employment density. Scholars have used simple counting methods as well as sophisticated statistical techniques to define and analyze the subcenters that make a city polycentric. Since it's fairly well accepted that most urban areas have some elements of polycentricity, the MFI set out to analyze recent trends in employment concentration in Southern California. We did this while considering some more contemporary ideas about city growth, like new urbanism, sustainability, and the idea of a creative class that drives economic growth. Our goal was to see how these subcenters have been evolving recently. In particular, we looked at the period from 1997 to 2014. To do this, we used a new data source from Reference USA that has the latitude and longitude of every business establishment in the region. We use a statistical technique called locally weighted regression to identify subcenters. The first step is to overlay a grid across the region. We then identify the spots in the region with the highest employment, the local maxima. Then we search the neighborhoods around the local maxima, looking about four miles in each direction for adjacent areas that also have high employment. Finally, we isolate the contiguous areas where the job concentration is significantly higher than in the areas around them. What we get are 46 subcenters across the region in 1997, shown here in blue, and 53 subcenters in 2014. About 17% of total employment is in a subcenter in 1997 and nearly 20% in 2014. This indicates that employment is increasing in these concentrated areas, but nonetheless the vast majority of jobs are actually outside of these mini downtowns. Certain types of jobs are more inclined to exist in subcenters than others. For example, business services, which includes things like lawyers, consultants, and engineers, tend to concentrate in centers. Retail employment exists fairly evenly within and outside of subcenters, while tech firms are substantially more concentrated by 2014. The creative class, which mainly reflects jobs in arts and recreation, is not heavily concentrated in centers. Interestingly, Anaheim, the home of Disneyland, is the largest creative center. What really stands out, though, is how these subcenters shift over time. Again, here are the subcenter boundaries in 1997, and here are the boundaries in 2014. Notice how there's only about 43% overlap, shown here in green. Some areas are no longer the local hub as far as job concentration is concerned, such as Paris, El Monte, and Oxnard. Meanwhile, there are a number of new centers like Rancho Cucamonga, Moreno Valley, and Whittier. Some areas, though, are particularly stable. Downtown Los Angeles, shown here, doesn't change at all between 1997 and 2014. Neither does nearby Glendale. Pasadena is fairly stable, with only a small portion that isn't in green. Again, green indicates areas common to 1997 and 2014 subcenter boundaries. The region surrounding Beverly Hills and West Hollywood also changes only slightly. Some other areas do show bigger shifts. For example, Burbank subcenter, shown here in 1997, shifts eastward toward Interstate 5 and Burbank's downtown, and away from the industrial area farther to the west. The same can be said elsewhere in the San Fernando Valley, where the local hub of activity moves northward. Some areas shift spatially and in terms of the kinds of jobs that characterize them. Here in the South Bay, this subcenter in 1997 creeps eastward toward the 405 freeway, becoming more industrially oriented in the process. 
Irvine, California provides a contrast between a stable and a shifting employment center. The well-established area near SNA Airport to the north is remarkably stable. It grows slightly by 2014 and is principally characterized by jobs and business services. The center further south only has a tiny bit of overlap between its 1997 and 2014 variants, shown here in green. In 1997, the local employment peak was a variety of light industry along Alton and Barranca Parkways. However, once the Irvine Spectrum Center shopping mall opened in the late 90s, the local peak shifted spatially and compositionally. So, what has this taught us? Well, mainly, shifts in the region's economy have two parts. A compositional shift, that is to say, the type of jobs in an area, and boundary shift, meaning that employment density can change location. We encourage you to take a look at our web mapping application and the full MFI quarterly report on detecting job density over time.